You say, uh, among other things, that this is going to hurt patients uh, uh, in North Carolina a great deal, but it may not really affect your company. It might even help it. Explain. Well, you know, obesity coverage is pretty rare, right? It's only one-fifth of the commercial patients actually have obesity coverage, and we know CMS currently does not cover obesity at all. And so we've, we've stepped up back in 2019 and created a Cure Access program where patients can actually receive the, the product for $99 cash uh, per month. And so that's still 75 plus percent of our business. So we, we're trying to bridge this, this gap between a lack of access uh, for patients suffering from obesity and uh, until a time when the, when the insurers and, and the government comes around and, and starts covering Your the, treatment the is a pill as opposed to some of those well-known, whether it's ZepBound or Wagovi, which are, are injections, right? Yours is a pill. Uh, and what, are the, what have the results been with this pill? In other words, what does the average patient lose in terms of weight? Yeah, so we've been we've been on the market since 2015, right? So this is this is this has been around for some time. Um, in our clinical pivotals that are in the package label, uh, patients lose uh, up to 25 pounds, 4.4 inches off their waist, um, up to 11 plus percent of their body weight. So you know it's a very effective medication. The the coverage of medics medicines uh, depends in large part, doesn't it, on the declaration that a a condition or uh, an affliction is a disease. Is obesity a disease or a condition? Obesity is a disease, and it's defined now as a disease. Unfortunately, we as society do not yet treat it as a disease. And so that's been coming more and more prevalent to do so and start to treat it as a disease uh, in, the, in the most recent years. But we still have a long way to go. Why is it, or does it appear, or why does it appear, I guess is how I would like to phrase that, that sometimes insurers or programs push uh, patients to the most expensive treatments rather than the less expensive treatments? Why is that? Am I right, or am I, I think, full of it? Well, I think you're right selectively. You know, I, I think the, the, the healthcare care system in, in general has done a great job, society in general has done a great job, of controlling diseases cost effectively, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, et cetera, right? But we don't start in those diseases with the most expensive medication. For whatever reason in obesity, uh, I think it's probably brand awareness and just the lack of understanding of obesity as a disease. Um, certain health plans in certain states like North Carolina have decided to start with the most expensive medication, which is which is contrary to how we as society treat so every why, other disease. So why is that? Why, why is that? You, you mentioned something that occurs to me, and that would be effective marketing on the part of pharmaceutical companies, either to practitioners, mostly to practitioners, but also on the airwaves like CNBC or Nightly News or whatever, where these drugs are widely advertised. Well, these new meds are exciting, right? I mean, the GLP-1s are going to make a, a complete sea change in the ability to treat obesity. And they have their place. Um, but as you look to Europe, and we see kind of Europe three or four years ahead of us, they don't let anyone first line have the most expensive medication. You actually have to go through what we would call step there in the United States, what they call in Europe more therapeutic-based um, uh, rationale or, or, or value-based type of, uh, of approach. So um, I think we'll get there. This decision in North, Car North Carolina points out we um, we're behind, and we need to learn more about this disease. And I think as society figures it out, we won't have to take drastic measures like banning all obesity medicine.